right. This is a glorious sports day. Well, the Twins might get rained out, but like it's a, on paper, it's a glorious sports day. You got the you know, Timberwolves playing. We'll talk about that. But Pat, we uh, we threw this number out yesterday before the fourth game of that Mariner series, and the numbers got even better. Byron Buxton, since the beginning of 2020, is slugging 640. <laughs> That's almost 150 points higher than Harmon Killebrew's career slugging percentage, the greatest power hitter in Twins history. He has 35 home runs in 400 plate appearances since the beginning of 2000. Keep this yeah. dude on the field, please. It is amazing where this power suddenly uh, suddenly came from. I, you know, from from the day he said I was going to stop listening to people, he started hitting all yeah, runs. Yeah. He just hasn't been on the field that much, but. Uh, the, the the other thing is where he's hitting them. They're monster. A lot of them are monstrous. Uh, the the first one was third deck, right? Didn't he go third yeah. deck? Uh, yeah, Saturday. And uh, yeah, he's that's a big, that's a quick full swing that he takes with a big finish. And uh, and uh, yeah, he's uh, more power there than I ever dreamed uh, that that there would be. And uh, he's just. He just decided to do it his way, and it's working a lot better than lifting up his leg and, uh, okay, <laughs> use your timing mechanism and all that stuff. His timing mechanism is. The other thing he's done, and we've talked about this, is for four years he was trying to be Joe Maurer, take strike one, uh, get, in a, get in a hitter's count, and that's not him. That's He's not a two-strike hitter. He chases on two strikes. So, uh, you know, just going back to, you know, what felt naturally for him has uh, been uh, terrific. And, let, uh, let me throw this one more stat at you because you brought it up here. So, and, I, and this does not include last night, but when Byron Buxton swings at the first pitch, going back to the beginning of last season, he's batting 540 yes. when he swings at the first pitch with yes. like 16 extra base hits in 40 plate appearances. <laughs> Yes, and I will give myself credit for complaining about that for four years of taking the bleep shot fastball <laughs> to get behind in the count because he's, you know, that's the best pitch you're going to get in the at bat. Hit it. And there's so few guys who do that now, but. Uh, Man alive, it's uh, it's something to watch. And you know what else, uh, fellas? He hasn't made any great catches yet. He's made a couple of good, but there was about three balls last night that he that if Kepler was playing center field or somebody, mm -hmm. there would have been drama. They would have not known if those were going to dunk in or not. And he's just he running in and catching them and heading mm -hmm. for the dugout. Uh, they are uh, twenty percent better when he plays they you know he, mm -hmm. i said that last year he's the pitching's better the fielding's way better and the hitting is now way better too there there there's nobody there's nobody in baseball at this moment more valuable to their team than he is i don't mm -hmm. think mm -hmm. not a hot take but arise needs to play like when you look at his yeah. approach at the plate he needs to play yes yeah he does uh i that was a little uh thought it was uh, two days ago when he had Ryan Jeffers pinch in, I mean, DHing and DH uh, rise. Now maybe he's trying to get him some at bats, but uh, uh, that was stupid. You, it's too early in the year to worry about, you know, worry about anything but winning and uh, getting it. Yes. Rise not only has to, has to play, he has to hit somewhere near the top of the order, maybe first. Uh, but then again, Buxton's doing okay hitting first, so uh, when he when he hits him there, so anyway, it's uh, yeah, it was. Uh, I, I I was really puzzled by Dylan Bundy last night, though getting them out because it doesn't look like it looked like he was just throwing strike one at ninety one, you know, and it's didn't look like movement or it, it just looked like a a well a fastball over the plate, yet uh, you know. He, he got him out, and uh, that's kind of odd to me. Maybe it's this time of year that it is, but it didn't. It didn't look like he was hitting great spots or anything. He was just throwing strikes. So, uh, but you got to take it, right? You know, you got to take it. So, 
He's, How long uh, are they going to go? Because so they're scheduled for a six man rotation right now, right? Yeah, they'll probably do it in, in April. But I heard Morney saying uh, that that might be uh, all year. Uh, you know that they did it was kind of pocking up the idea, but you only going to have thirteen pitchers. Yeah, come May first. So do you think this guy's going to go with a seven man bullpen? No, one of those guys is going to be uh, a reliever. Uh, for the, and, and then you'll have the, the other guy if you want to give him, if you want to pop it in and have a six man sometime now and again, but somebody's going to be a reliever. And you know, it would be a very good one. You might need him as a starter, but over, I think it'd be a really good reliever because uh, he throws strikes and he's, you know, he can just rely on his fastball if he's, uh, if he's relieving. But then again, we haven't seen Chris Archer yet either. So, Let's let's wait until we see him if 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 he's actually one of the few guys who's disappeared uh, because of that uh, thoracic outlet surgery and actually comes. But let's see if he's going to come back or not. Strasburg hasn't come back, and I'd say if he can't come back from it yet, I, I don't know about Chris Archer. Yeah. But uh, they, it would be nice. You know, I was looking at Miguel yesterday. He hasn't put a ball in play yet. But he is a little slimmer. He's not not slim, but he's not. He, I don't think he's over two eighty. Do you? <laughs> I, I mean, mean, how do you good. judge at some point? Unless his guts just hanging out. Is, I two seventy five for him is not bad. He's this is the tackle. this is the fifth different off season that we've had the best shape of his life ready yeah, to. His no, problem no. is not his weight; it's his no, one it's his all eleven that, average. Nobody made that accusation last year. He was big last year. And yeah. uh, when the and and he was huge in nineteen, uh, and uh, which is amazing because that's the year they hit all the home runs. But uh, but he, you know, he looks like he's settled in as a nice, comfortable two seventy five. So which is uh, it looks like it's helping play. so far too, from what I can tell at the plate. Yeah, oh, the yeah. bats are awful. Huh? <laughs> they're, they're, his at bats are awful. Okay, at what point? At what point? Like, how can you justify him in the lineup over our eyes on any given day, right? Like, if there's a day where he's yeah. in the lineup and Luis is on the bench, I have a hard time justifying that. But you don't have to make that decision because Arise is in DH when he's not playing third base. It's, uh, you know, it's a it's an easy decision to make. You can have him in there because you don't have a DH now. You know what? It was nice having Nelson Cruz around, but I don't like not having a DH. I like being able to play guys and uh, uh, if, if you have competent guys, not if you have to have Mike Redmond DH or something like that. But uh, And bat third, what's wrong with that? Yeah, yes. <laughs> but uh, the lineup's good. Correa's not hitting it. Correa's not hitting either. I mean, he yesterday he left a bunch of guys on base when I could have broke the game open. But uh, so I, I do think for the most part, uh, certainly not in Buxton's case, but for the most part, around the league, the pitchers are ahead of the hitters. Some some really good hitters aren't hitting yet, so we'll find out. But it's uh, you know it's there's there's reasons to watch right now to look at the lineup and see if they can keep pitching okay. And Duran was an interesting experiment for the uh, ninth inning last night. That's uh, oh, that was now it wasn't was high awesome. pressure. It wasn't high pressure. And so we'll see if he throws as many strikes when he's trying to protect a one-run lead, and it's three to two against a good lineup. But, but it's, I, I think uh, Morneau did have one decent statement last night. He says we haven't seen that. We haven't seen a hundred triple figures from this side of the game for a long time. He said around here we don't. When's it, when's our last a hundred guy? Not do we ever have one? Did Jim, uh, gr- Jim, did Jim gr- Hoey hit 100 one time? <laughs> yeah. but uh, Gratterall, Gratterall hit 101 yeah. point something before he got traded. And That's he had to grunt. He had to grunt to get to 100. You don't like guy, the grunts? This guy, no, this guy, what I'm saying is when he turns it loose, it's 100. That's it. Yeah. That's where his fastball sits. And then Beats Tyler late. Duffy. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Sonny Sunny Gray's also a grunter. He was grunting trying to strike some guys he's out. He's Rich the Hill. He well. swears yeah, too. <laughs> yeah, he, he drops f bombs as well, which I, like I really it. appreciate. Yeah. Well, we'll uh, 
Uh, nobody at the game last night, as you expect on a Monday night and, uh, against uh, Seattle, I guess. But uh, this is really, really an ugly schedule. They haven't to bring the Dodgers. I've been saying it, but the, you get the Dodgers to town and you're praying to get the game in and draw 8,000 people. When you got the Dodgers here, it should be in June or July, and you should have 32,000 in the ballpark. Yeah. So it's it's a tragedy that this is the this is the way that you get the Dodgers to come to town in this situation. Yeah, well, I think we'll pack some people into the Target Center tonight, Pat. What's your yes, what's your will. what's your feeling here? I'm I'm not brimming with confidence. I I you know the Clippers since they got George back have been pretty dang good. They uh, I I think it's up to D'Lo. I think it is up to D'Lo. If D'Lo plays, if D'Lo throws up one of those three for 12s, they're going to get beat. If he plays good and makes shots, uh, they'll win. But, uh, the, you know, they need him to make shots because they, they these guys are going to give super extra attention to Carl uh, Anthony Towns. So. Yeah, I th- so they it's it's hard to tell, too, because – these teams played all four of their games before yeah, the All Star break, and three of the games were like in the in the first month of the season when the Wolves weren't really functional yet. So they haven't. And then the fourth game, the Wolves. So the, the Wolves lost the first three. Then they won the fourth game. But the fourth game, D'Lo, Cat were out with COVID protocol, and Paul George was out. So mm-hmm. there's no like post All Star break matchup to look at with these two teams. We don't really know what they look like on the court together. And I heard you guys talking yesterday, and you're absolutely right. This is this is playing Denver the last game, the last time they make the playoffs, <clears throat> to make the play. I mean, if you lose tonight, what the hell there is to make what happens Friday? Yeah, you know, you're 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 going into that playoff series with exactly the same chance that you had last time against Houston. Yeah. None. If you have to play Phoenix. If you have to play Memphis, you can win. You can you can certainly win you'll be underdogs, but you can win the series against uh, Memphis. You could outwin the you could out you, you won't win a game against Phoenix. I don't think so. you're 